The alchemist talked about it in a lovely sequenced way, which makes it seem so wonderfully knowable. But for most of us, it's not quite so predictable. We do a little bit of one stage and then another stage. We come back, pick up a thread. But the first stage that the alchemists called the negredo, which we could think psychologically is that initial stage which is characterized by this experience of chaos and confusion and suffering. We're in that place where Jung has told us one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. The alchemists believed that metals had to be changed back into the prima materia before they could be transmuted. So, and Joseph, this goes to what you were saying a minute ago. The, you know, it's one of the basic sayings is, I think we've already said it, is salve et coaglio. Uh, so dissolve and coagulate. And it implies psychologically that for change to happen, we have to go back to a former state before something new can come forward. And although I don't play golf, I, will, I have heard golfers <laughs> complain that, you know, if you develop a certain golf stroke, right, and then if you're going to try to improve that, the pro comes and tells you you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you have to put your weight here, whatever they say. And people's game falls apart at that point. Like they can't play at all. That's the, the salve before they learn the new skill. So, so this is a pattern of uh, that, that you know, this is also in the psychoanalytic world, it's, it's sort of commonly uh, known that, that, there, that you have to regress before you move forward. And, and uh, Jung, of course, used a uh, French phrase for that, recollier pour mieux sauter, uh, which is to kind of go back. Ooh, so that's you can impressive. Better jump Say forward. Well, no, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that our French <laughs> listeners will be horrified at my pronunciation. But, um, but, but in any case, it, it, again, it's an archetypal pattern that in, the, in, the, in a change process, we have to go back to the way we were before, or, or sometimes just fall apart and dissolve before we can move forward into a new form. So if we want to just brush up against the processes a little more psychologically, mm -hmm. there's a long list of the various nuanced stages that we can find. The alchemist talked about it in a lovely sequenced way, which makes it seem so wonderfully knowable. but. For most of us, it's, uh, it's not quite so predictable. We mm -hmm. do a little bit of one stage and then another stage. We come back, pick up a thread. But the first stage that the alchemists called the negredo, which we could think psychologically, is that initial stage which is characterized by this experience of chaos and confusion and suffering. Now, in most all of the ancient initiatic traditions, when the initiate was first brought into their very first initiation, they would often be hoodwinked. They would put a, a cover over their eyes so that they were blind. And they were often told in the beginning to admit that they are in a state of ignorance and therefore suffering, a state where my sight is not clear. And this admission that there are things going on that are causing me pain, that I am driven to resolve, but I can't see them. That to me is, is part of that beginning of the negredo. Some people call it the dark night of the soul, but I think that's actually probably a little bit different. Um, but it's a necessary confrontation with our own suffering. And in a more pure Jungian standpoint, it has to do with the confrontation with the shadow and the repressed mm. and the unconscious parts of the shadow, which, as Deb was saying, puts us in touch with the inner infant, which are those primal parts of ourselves that we at one time knew, often when we were quite young, but the culture or other circumstances has caused them to be split off. In the Negredo, we're in that place where 
Jung has told us, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, Mm -hmm. but by making the darkness conscious. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to pull the shadow into ourselves, as Deb had said around regression, we can feel ourselves reduced to a kind of chaos where the old things we thought about ourselves, oh, I I must always be virtuous, Mm -hmm. isn't that true? And then flies start landing on our soul and laying their (laughs) eggs and (laughs) maggots start (laughs) start moving around inside of us. And then we discover that I am really full of um, problems. So in that stage, people can feel depressed and confused and in turmoil. They can lose their direction or their meaning of life. They're confronting their repressions. Oh, am I much angrier than I thought I was? Or I'm more passive? There's often a lot of heightened anxiety. People will have dreams about darkness, dreams about dismemberment, where there's decaying bodies sometimes or threatening shadowy monsters that are chasing them around the house, or being lost in a forest, or sinking in mud or quicksand. And the resolution of the negredo comes through the acceptance of the shadow and confronting the difficult emotions that we've been avoiding. So exactly, the individual stays in the darkness and allows the dissolution of the persona to really take place. The next stage is generally the albedo, or the whitening, which they would say is a period of uh, purification or illumination, and that corresponds to coming into a greater state of consciousness. And they think of it as a purification. Purification means that we have washed away the things that are alien. So like if you purify water, water is H2O, but if there's a bunch of other chemicals in it, those alien chemicals have to get sifted out so it's pure water. So the albedo becomes part of that wonderful stage of analysis where you've accepted your shadow, which gives you a sense of what your original personality is, and you begin to get a sense of how you've been colonized by other people's ideas, cultural ideas, beliefs that don't really belong to you. And by sensing the alienness of that, we're able to wash that out. And little by little, we become whitened, meaning we become all of one thing, which is really what our true and natural personality is. So people often feel a great sense of relief. They have more clarity. They feel calmer. They feel renewed. They sometimes can feel more philosophical or have more of an interest in spirituality. The albedo can have dreams or bring upon itself dreams of water or flowing. Um, Literally, sometimes people have white figures, a white dog, a white dove, a white stag, dreams of breaking through darkness or lighting a candle, or literally having dreams of bathing. So there is a sense of who one is. The third stage, they call the uh, citrinitas, or the yellowing stage, which is the dawning of wisdom. And the yellowing is thought to be a kind of depositing of gold, so to speak. That if you imagine having just a, a white a bowl of substance and you drop little flecks of gold into it, that it would take on a bit of a golden sheen. So the white, which is also associated with the unconscious, gets a little bits of solar wisdom dropped into it. And that begins to give us a sense of maturity, a sense of balance. So we become more and more conscious of our true potential, 
which is that anima animus recognition, that we begin to accept that we have a mission that is unique to us, a deeper connection to intuition and creativity. We notice synchronicity more. There's more harmony or light. People sometimes will have dreams of tremendous freedom. We might encounter wise old men or wise old women or mentors in our dreams. I've had people dream of golden orbs or digging in the ground and and finding a lump of gold. And so this stage is marked by a continuing pursuit of self-understanding. Perhaps you're reading Jung's work or listening to this Jungian life, for (laughs) instance. little bits of, of, of gold filter down in. And the final stage in this truncated version is the rubedo. And uh, one of the fun things about the rubedo, um, which is just kind of a fun fact, but uh, in the ancient world, and people were making glass, so you would melt down sand, silica. And uh, the ancient chemists discovered if you put little bits of various minerals in the glass and melt it in, it will change color. So what they discovered is if you add flecks of gold to molten glass, it turns red. So there's a relationship where the gold of the yellowing stage reaches a certain point and the personality which has become more transparent, so to speak, less contaminated, begins to redden because enough wisdom has become integrated into the process. So in the truncated version, this is the quote-unquote final stage of alchemy. The union of opposites is completed, the primary opposite being between the ego and the anima animus, which means the self is now perceptible There's a greater sense of wholeness. This inner marriage has happened. The conscious and the unconscious, the moon and the sun, have come together, and the demarcation between the conscious and unconscious mind is now no longer a wall, but the shore of an ocean. And the ego finds that it can move fluidly between those worlds. This is the philosopher's stone the Philosopher's Stone finally being the human personality when it is connected to the self, and therefore it gains the properties of the opus and the Philosopher's Stone, one of which is the power to heal. And so Jung said with great confidence that the greatest healing agent in the analysis is the analyst's personality if they have done their own work comes something of a philosopher's stone. I know I threw a lot out there. No, 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 it's great. Back. I, you know, when, one of the things I wanted to follow up on is that, I don't know about you guys, but it is not uncommon for, for the people. I mean, over the course of years that I've been doing this, I've heard so many dreams where people had some combination of those colors conspicuously, like, oh, there yes. was something black, and then there was something white, and then there was something gold. And, you know, maybe in different uh, kind of um, orders or something. But I, I'm always really struck by that because they're often, when there are these very particular sequence of colors and dreams, they're often these, these four colors and maybe not quite in that order. And I, I, always, I always feel like it points to some kind of process when colors turn up in a dream. But it's, it's very interesting. 